Item one on their agenda is uh, apologies for absence, of which there are none, and declarations of interest. Are there any Pippa? I have a declaration of interest, a financial one, as a member of the Cairngorm National Park Authority Board, but I have a dispensation to remain as a councillor and take part in the discussion. Thank you. Any further declarations? Although it's not mentioned in, in anywhere in the papers, I'm a director of Cairngorm Mountain Scotland Limited and, and we'll leave the meeting if such an item uh, arises. Item three on the agenda is the Cairngorm National Park Authority Partnership Plan and our response uh, as a council to that. So uh, I'm going to hand you straight over to Kate, um, who's, who's going to lead us through it. Kate. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, good morning, members. Uh, the paper in front of you today for our special meeting is our response to the Cairngorm National Park Authority consultation on their plan. Um, this response has been compiled through discussion and engagement across the council, across a number of services of the council, including our planning and development colleagues, um, communities colleagues, uh, myself, um, Liz as ward manager, and uh, I think um, is relatively detailed and picks up on a number of good points across the plan. But the, the main theme, I think, is that we welcome um, broadly welcome what the plan is about, um, the ambitions that the Cairngorm National Park Authority have for the area and um, uh, the uh, way in which that the, the con consultation is um, set out, which is a, on nature, people and place, is then mirrored by our consultation response across a variety of objectives that are set out in the draft consultation. And then at the end of our response, um, there's a number of general points, um, technical questions and general points where we've picked up on a number of issues where we think that there needs to be a, maybe a bit of tweaking here and there around about um, linking in with some of our key strategies. I think the other thing um, that we would pick up on and is in the general points at the introduction is that uh, because of the way that the consultation set out, which, uh, as I say, through those three themes is a nice way of presenting it and a good way of working through it, um, it's just acknowledging the amount of um, interrelationships there are between those three themes and that uh, there are a number of areas that actually cut across all of those. Um, but that's, as I say, set out in the introduction. And I hope that all of the elements are clear, but if there's any points that um, members feel could be clarified or expanded upon, obviously we're very happy to make adjustments to the plan, uh, to the response to the plan. The formal uh, cutoff date for the responses was the 17th of December, but uh, the Park Authority very kindly has granted us an extension to enable the area committee to formally consider the council's response. And uh, so uh, we can submit um, any time in the next few days and it will still be um, accepted as part of the uh, consultation responses to the plan. And our expectation is that a further iteration will come um, sort of early in the new year, probably February, March time. Um, and then uh, there may be opportunities for further engagement before the plan is then published. Uh, I would also say that the Park Authority have been really good at engaging prior to the um, publication of their consultation. And so the council and local members have had a chance to feed into that prior to the, the consultation being issued. And therefore, a number of our original points were picked up on um, prior to this one. So as I say, um, if there are any points, queries or additions, um, I'd be very happy to incorporate those into the response. Thank you. You know, bearing in mind this is a partnership plan, um, I can't think of any period within the last 10 years where the National Park and the Council have been working so closely together. Uh, I think that's a credit to, to officers on both sides. So members, do you have any points you wish to raise? Muriel. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for uh, Kate and all the, the team that have um, come up with this detailed uh, reply. Chair, how do you want to take it? Because I've got various comments for each section, or do you want me just to? Just, just make your comments. Um, and okay. and, and if, if it's an addition we need to make, that will need to be approved by the other members. OK. S sorry, just bear with me. I need to minimise and, and read my notes. Um, first of all, um, just under the, the way that we always set out our papers, I am always um, keen to ensure when we talk about risk that we actually do look at risk. And I think there is a risk if we are unable to um, 
provide accommodation for for people. I just want to throw that in there because uh, accommodation is a big risk in this ward. Um, however, uh, I'll carry on. Um, bear with me to scroll down. Nature, there are a few comments I've got about nature and while I have got no huge issues with public ownership of woodland, I think we need to ensure that, um, sorry, public or not private ownership of land, particularly when we're talking about protection of habitats um, and restoration. We need to ensure that this, and this has happened in other areas of Scotland, that it's not an excuse for landowners to say they're doing a restoration or a forestation programme um, and it's a way of excluding the members of the public off the land. And I'm sure you're all, you've all heard about uh, various um, reasons that some of the, the big landowners are looking to use the the reforestation or the peatland work as a uh, to offset against tax. And I think we must be very aware of that. And I think, I think we need to model uh, um, as to how we can ensure that uh, propriety is being followed. Uh, the other thing that before is, you go any uh, further, Muriel, can you stick your microphones on mute, please? I'm sorry. Carry on, Muriel. Thank you. Sorry about that. The other one, objective A16. Um, I think I've got. I don't think I know. I have got concerns to this, and I know some people in the communities have got concerns to this. Livestock overgrazing is something that needs to be managed sensitively, and I think we need to be. Um, careful in our language. We need we need to get the balance right, and we also need to look at um, if it's deer management. That that's a separate thing, and that comes through all the various bodies that do that. But we need to ensure that we are not affecting our farmers and our crofters. Uh, when we're talking about, uh, oh, there are too many cows or this, that and other way. There are creative and there are clever ways that other countries are looking at methane uh, and capture. And what I would love to see, uh, and I think this is where Highland Council could really forge a strong partnership, is looking at these as new ways of working. And I want uh, our area to be at the forefront of this, you know, uh, using the science, using our schools, using innovative ways of, of looking at this and not just say, oh, we're not doing this, we're, we're stopping that. So I think we need to look at all the partners and look at our agricultural community, because we have a lot in this ward, whether it's the big, uh, the large farms or the small crops um, to do that. I'll stop there just now um, and let somebody else come in. So do you have any proposed changes to the response? Proposed changes would be to, and I don't know how to word this, I'll be honest, it's the, it's the land, I, I think we need to put something in for the large landowners that the work that they are doing, it's not at the exclusion of the public having access and, and, and scrutiny of that. I don't want the, the work to be done just as a tax avoidance scheme. I really don't. And I don't know how to word it, Bill, I'll be honest. I'll be honest, Muriel, I, I'm, I can't help you because I don't know what you're trying to get to. Um... Does anybody else understand what I'm, I'm saying here? Or are they not? Yes, I understand what you're trying to say, but um... I think you've got to sort of leave it in the hands of the landowners who have very marginal uh, profits or, or losses uh, or big losses on an annual basis. Um, <clears throat> so many of these estates are just a sink for cash. Uh, and, you know, we've got a lot of uh, wealthy landowners there that are stop it, that are pr preserving these estates because they've got plenty of money. It's not a high profitable thing. I don't think that. I, I did some finding out the other, some time ago that there's hardly any profits being made on these estates. Pepper. 
I just wanted to say that um, I do understand what you're referring to, Muriel, but I think that's covered by the right to roam in Scotland. And the only reason landowners can prohibit access onto their state would be as a matter of safety, whether that would be because there was shooting or whether there was active forestry going on. A lot of the um, revitalization of the woodlands isn't with regard to forestry, it's with regard to native woodland and regeneration plans, which again has no reason to exclude the public. So I think with regards to the response of this, the council to the plan, we should trust that the various mechanisms that are in place, such as the right to roam, will safeguard people's access to the land and not preempt um, something that hasn't actually been raised. That's my opinion. Yeah, yeah I, I understand that, and I think that's that's well put. I think the, there is precedent in, in, in Scotland and in the West Coast where the right to access has been uh, stopped by the, the landowner uh, because of the, the regeneration of the native woodland. So whether that is something we could suggest that the right to roam and, and that uh, is not... Um, there is no detriment to the right to roam um, for any um, rest, uh, reforestation or work uh, that's going on uh, in the carbon um, zero targets. Okay. Um, you know, this is quite difficult because we won't have the opportunity to revisit this. Um, it needs to be some significant wording on any changes you want to make. Um, I don't know if Kate can help us in any way. Um, so, I mean, what, what I could put in, and um, we could put it in the general comments potentially rather than um, a, against the specific objectives, is in the general comments we can um, potentially say, you know, welcome the uh, approach to um, but of course, we'll need to have a proper amendment. So what I would suggest is that um, a concern was expressed regarding the potential um, impact to right of access. And we would like the plan to be clear that there should be no detriment to the public's right of access. And this needs to be balanced against the protection of forestry and reforestation. And if um, Melanie is able to capture that. So um, concern has been expressed about the potential impact on the right of access, and therefore the plan needs to protect that right of access and balance against the need to protect land and reforestation. Would that be OK? I'm happy with that. Thank you. Pepper. Could it be said something instead of um, the potential or a potential for rather yep. than a specific, uh, you know, so a potential yep. that could happen? John. Um, I was just concerned wh whether we should include agriculture as well as forestry. OK, we're happy with that. Right, OK, carry on, Muriel, to your next set. Could I, um, would it be all right if I just added to some of Muriel's other points? Sure. Uh, thank you, Chair. I was just going to say we picked up on accommodation, um, at Councillor Coburn, and actually in the main um, general comments, we've put in quite a strong bit around about the need to provide housing and the place theme, the need to ensure their interrelationships picked up across the plan. The, the focus on housing is very welcome um, as one of the most important priorities for the area. And in addition to affordable housing, there needs to first to be available housing. And so there needs to be a look at how to increase and protect availability of housing. It should also be given prominence. So I'd, I'd hope um, that that might capture what you were saying, and therefore an amendment's not necessarily needed on the housing side of things. I, no, I, think, it, I think that captures it perfectly, Kate. I think it's already in the paper. I don't think it needs any further addition. And, and then on objective A16, when you were talking about um, overgrazing, 
I was wondering if the response that we've put into A7 again might capture that. So in A7, we'd said the ambition of reducing the carbon footprint of fam farming is a right ambition, which should be recognised that some farms will struggle to reach net zero using existing technology and farming methods. Perhaps this objective could include language around about landscape approach, which makes clear that individual farms can contribute to a net zero landscape without necessarily achieving it themselves. So again, it's trying to be um, sensitive to the fact that each landowner and each um, farmer will need to approach these things in a slightly different way, depending on the nature of their of their land holding and their capabilities. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay, you move on to the next one, please, Mira. Just bear with me, please, to scroll down to my notes here. It's. I just wanted to chat uh, about the, the transport. We all talk about transport, um, and it was just in the in, in the back of. I don't know how we solve this, and you know, I'm I'm not sure anybody does. But I think we need to. Um, you know, it, it mentions the, the the transport forum. Is that our only source of of looking at transport? Uh, I I just I don't know. I'm I'm just worried about that. Well, I think the response actually mentions other groups um, uh -huh. other than it mentions one by name, but it does include um, uh, the ability to contact other groups. Mm -hmm. OK, OK. Can you just continue, please? Sorry, I think that that was just a, it was just about transport because I'm I, I'm really really keen that we we look at the whole um, scope of that, but I'll I'll leave that just now. That's me just now. Thank you, Chair. Okay. And any members, anything else you you wish to comment on or, or have additions to? Pippa, John. My only one uh, is on the, the final comments, which is um, on actions, which is an A2. It specifically mentions TPOs, and I think we need to make that stronger because um, there have been um, considerable problems locally here with TPOs being ignored in planning uh, decisions. So I think uh, is there a possible way that we can strengthen that? Oh. Um, it was just on the back of what you've just said with regard to um, tree preservation orders being ignored um, and trees being taken down before planning comes forward to potentially have reference to that it wouldn't be seen um, positively just to try and deter people sort of preempting a planning application by the removal of trees which I have noticed locally. Yeah, that's that's a pretty standard developer trick. Um, but I think it was um, particularly prevalent in places where there is a tree preservation order in place um, or uh, there isn't. I think ancient woodland inventory is pretty well covered, but tree preservation orders seem to be able to be ignored by planning committees or by planning officer. Um, so I'm just reading it again. Could we add an extra sentence and that um, tree preservation orders um, are con are considered as a statutory indicator? In, in in planning condition and planning permissions, something around that. Muriel. Thank you, uh, Chair. Is it too strong a word to use enforcement? Because what we we hear a lot is that there's a lack of people to enforce, and and it's too late. So, how? I I think actually the the cases that I'm thinking about is is not actually about enforcement because. Um, what what is happening is that 
it would appear that um, planning committees have the right to to basically override tree preservation orders. Um, and it may be that uh, some form of indication that um, planning committees should not override uh, the provision of tree preservation orders. I, and you, I think you all know I'm specifically speaking about the the, the Aviemore applications recently. John. Yeah, um, the, the tree side of things, I think we've got to be careful in that, you know, trees do come down through old age. And, you know, it, it is uh, intelligence being exercised when TPOs are, are put in place, uh, whether the trees have very little time to live uh, or what? Um, I think it's a bit free and easy with the TPOs. Uh, and uh, and well, as you're saying, Bill, they can overturn, the planning can overturn a TPO, which is probably the, the one breathing space uh, any uh, developer gets. I'm not actually looking at it from the developer's point of view, I'm looking at it from the, the public perspective. Um, and, and in any case, our tree officer um, basically decides whether a, a specific tree should have a preservation order on it or not. Um, but the community are consulted, whereby in its removal, the community are not consulted. Right. OK, thanks. So just a mild strengthening of, of that action uh, with reference to A2. We should not um, should not override the provision of TPOs without due consideration. Something like that doesn't mean they say you can't do it, but it means that it needs to be a specific consideration. Anybody not happy with that, Kate? So just so I can get the wording right, <clears throat> so would the would the intention be to put in a uh, an amendment that says um, a two would benefit um, from a commitment. I'm just going to, that we would like to see a presumption against any activity that degrades, damages, or negatively affects these important wooden habitats. In addition, a commitment should be given that planning committees should not override the provision of tree preservation orders without due consideration. Yeah, that 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 would suit me. Anyone else? All right with that. So it, it, it allows developers to put forward proposals, but it means that it will be highlighted to the relevant planning committee, whether it's us or the National Park. Anyone got anything else? Quickest meeting in history. Thank you all. And specifically, um, just pass on our thanks, Kate, to all those who did quite a large amount of work um, and Whilst it may not seem large in words, there was a lot of work went on behind the scenes in, in providing A, the original response, and B, this formal response. So we really just pass on our thanks. And um, if I don't see you all between now and the festive season, have a very Merry Christmas. Um, enjoy Stay yourself safe. and hope your head gets better soon, John. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Bye all. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you, members. Have a wonderful Christmas, everyone. Yes. Yeah, so